This. This is a 64 core monster. I want to enable precision boost overdrive. I mean, it's 280 watts without that. But cooling. Cooling's gonna be an issue. Fortunately, I've got just the thing. All right, so first off, I wanna talk for a second about my case and my setup here. This system is the ROG Xenos 2 Extreme Alpha. I bought this one. This one, Asus actually sent me. It's the WRX80, so it's Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. I've been doing some other videos. You should check those out if you're trying to decide on Threadripper versus Threadripper Pro. This is a Noctua tower cooler, and I've got a push-pull setup here. If you're gonna go for a tower cooler, one of the ones that I would recommend is the NHU 14S TR4 SP3, but definitely go for the dual fan configuration. In this case, I'm actually using the industrial ones, so I'm kind of cheating. This is actually the, that's the 140 millimeter tower cooler. This is the 120 millimeter tower cooler. But with these fans, it moves a crazy amount of air through the heat sink, and it performs almost as good, not quite, but it's quite a bit louder. A little too loud for my taste. So I've got a setup here, the Ice Giant Thermo Siphon. You may be saying, wait a minute, wasn't this machine on a, on a custom loop before? Yeah, I've, I've moved the Threadripper Pro into a custom loop. Look, thermosiphons are cool. The last time that I used a thermosiphon, it was to keep the nuclear magnetic resonance imaging machine that I was building for a physics experiment in college cool. Thermosiphons are the real deal, and it's a different but similar but also the same sort of mechanism as the cooling that you normally have in a tower cooler because the Noctua coolers, they don't care about orientation. A thermosiphon does because its coolant is uh, depending on gravity to do the circulation. Whereas, you know, normally capillary action means that it, it doesn't really matter too much about the heat sink orientation. We haven't really needed a thermosiphon for microprocessors, uh, common pedestrian, common peasant, microprocessors until now and you still don't really technically need a thermosiphon unless you unleash the beast with PBO. This is what I was saying about Threadripper Pro. So with Threadripper Pro this would have to be oriented like this which is not going to help us unless we're not in a tower case we're in a desktop case. So this will work perfectly fine horizontally no problem uh, you know like this or like this horizontally again make sure your stuff's level because gravity has to pull the liquid down here to the hot spot. And that's why this has to be mounted like this and not like this, because gravity has to pull the condensed liquid from the heat sink back to the part that's getting hot. So makes sense, I think. Now, one thing that I'll point out also, this bottom slot is PCI Express by eight on our Sage WRX80 motherboard from Asus, <laughs> all of these slots are by 16 because it's 128 PCI Express lanes. If you're gonna go with a motherboard like this, you pretty much need to go with the largest case you can possibly get. And so you need the XL, but there's a bonus. It's like seven slots, oh, we got a big GPU, how are you gonna use it? If you use the WRX80 motherboard with the Fractal Defined XL, you can put your video card in the very bottom slot. All of these connectors along the bottom edge of the motherboard are a right angle. So the GPU, even though it's a triple slot GPU, hangs off of the end of the motherboard. And as a result, all six slots remain usable in this configuration. Plus you get your, your 3M.2. So really, this is about running 64 cores in a smaller case where you don't need a custom loop. So I'm still gonna use a custom loop with my Threadripper Pro machine, but the Ice Giant, I'm gonna use in this because the socket is the right orientation. If it's turned the other way, it's not gonna work. Ice Giant Pro Siphon. It's a thermo siphon. Thermo siphons are like a thing in industrial stuff. Now you don't have to use this with TR4, but if you're not using it with TR4, you better be using it on a massively overclocked, you know, 10980 XE. Anything else is a waste. Look how ridiculous that is. It's so crazy. Whew. Nice. You know what else you get in the box? Cryonaut. Uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's good stuff. Now, if I were a really good person at planning ahead, I could have gone with like, you know, the Thor, Norse mythology themed build. You know, it's like, <laughs> I am the Balisk nerd bringing the, uh, 
the Threadripper awesomeness to, you know, the mighty hammer of Thor or whatever, but instead, in the last video, I had already named this Gandalf the Grey. You know, does that imply that we'll be looking at dawn to the east for... Maybe. <laughs> Look at the manual. It's warning you in the manual. Like, no, don't install it incorrectly. No. Condenser is above the evaporator. Oh, they've labeled the bags. It's so good. 1366, 11.5x, 1200, Intel, whatever. Oh, and my thermal paste spreader is my conductonaut. Oh, my conductonaut is in the Intel. Look, I know Rocket Lake is kind of a blast furnace, but, you know, did you just assume my processor by putting in the thermal grizzly in the you know, whatever bag. All right, I don't need any of this. Oh, well, that's cool, it includes a four pin Y cable just in case your motherboard is crappy. I mean, uh, doesn't have enough headers. Yay, they're properly labeled because the screws are almost the same for uh, 2066, but they're slightly less tall or slightly taller. You've also got an extra bag. If you decide to do a push-pull configuration, you get the screws for it. They gave me the fans. <laughs> I forgot I put that up there. <laughs> These look suspiciously like Cooler Master Sickle Flow fans. Now something you'll have to be careful of when you're doing this installation. The plastic standoffs have a little lip that fit up in the metal bracket that the coolers actually mounted on. And when I installed this, I initially had it a little sort of cattywampus because one of those little plastic things was sitting just a little off kilter. And if you do that, if you don't notice that, your Thermosiphon is not going to make adequate contact with the cooler because it's going to be sitting at a little bit of an angle. I guess since we've already got the fans, we might as well go ahead and install them. So, how much RAM clearance do I have? Not much. Will I be able to use the fancy OLOY memory that has wings? No. No, you will not. G Skill Trident Z Neo, that fits. G Skills Rip Jaws 5, which is what I have in here now, that also fits. Just like me. Pro tip if you get this cooler, just go ahead and max out your RAM at 256 gigabytes so you never have to take the cooler off again in order to do the upgrade. Once again, this is another really just BA way that these fractal cases are awesome because I'm going to take out a couple of screws here and then I'm going to have no problem plugging in my fans. Otherwise, it would be a. It'd be a bit of a tight fit. Check that out. I've got my cables reasonably managed and even with this installed, I didn't have too hard of a time getting that plugged in. Now we've got the Ice Giant Thermo Siphon installed and I've managed not to get thermal paste completely everywhere. It fits in our Meshify 2. This is not the XL version, this is the slate gray version. I've still got a pretty high end motherboard. I can still see my OLED display. Isn't that why you buy a motherboard like this? Is because it's got that insane OLED display. You can still see it. It's there. All right, let's go benchmark it. Well, the results are in and the Ice Giant is darned impressive. I mean, it's every bit as good as a 360 millimeter custom loop radiator, but with less stuff to break. In fact, there's literally nothing that will break. Now, if I might make one suggestion, it's to move the fans off of the back of the Ice Giant and just mount them in the top of the fractal case and exhaust air out the top. That'll breathe a little bit better. Your temperatures will be a little bit of, uh, improved in that configuration. What it counts on that's different than a regular tower cooler is the power of gravity to pull condensed liquid back to the hot plate. And that lets me run my 64 core Threadripper at 350 watts, 380 watts, something in that neighborhood. And that makes a big difference. I can basically just toggle on PBO, uh, bring down my EDC limit to something a little bit more sane on this ASUS motherboard. ASUS likes to go a little over the top and uh, it's basically 100% stable. Yes, it's an overclock. Yes, warranty and things like that is completely out the window. But if you do want to run it at stock, not lose your warranty or anything like that, this is the quietest solution you could possibly get. The pump on a custom loop is going to be louder than the setup with this thing, even with four fans, because they're going to move air through there pretty good. Now you might be wondering, is that Mr. Spock in your case? That's, that's just stupid. Like, why would you have action figures in your case? Uh, it's actually preventing GPU sag. Thank you very much. Really, the only downside is just RAM clearance. And the RAM clearance is actually pretty good in that you can use sort of some of the quasi, you know, sort of gamery RAM that's a little bit tall, just not super tall memory. 
And yeah, it'll be a little bit of a pain if you go to upgrade. That system, I've really, I've, I've sort of robbed the 128 gigabytes of memory that was in it. Well, it was 256 and then it was 128. And I'm going to have to, you know, rejigger some things in order to uh, get the memory configuration that I want in there. But this is a really compact 64 core machine that has plenty of room for three and a half inch storage, has plenty of room for SSDs, has plenty of room for PCIe storage, and is quiet enough to run on top of a desk right next to your head and it won't be annoying. This is an impressive engineering accomplishment. I'm really, I'm really pretty surprised that Ice Giant was able to shrink a thermosiphon to a package that's this small because it is different. It's a different cooling thing versus a regular tower cooler versus an all-in-one. And they've, they've done their engineering, they've done their homework. So I paid about 170 US for this, give or take, and I would do it again in a heartbeat, especially for Threadripper Pro. So I can't wait. You know, I asked them, I was like, hey, you got anything for Threadripper Pro? And they said, we'll get back to you. So cool stuff coming, we're looking, at dawn to the east, I don't know. On um, Wondolus' level one, this has been a quick look at uh, the Ice Giant Thermo Siphon. And also, you know, don't forget about the pro tip, like running your GPU in the last slot if you've got a ridiculous WRX80 motherboard. That's a big pro tip. You don't lose any expansion slots. That's amazing. On um, Wondolus' level one, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.